Now we're just before we get into the end of year tier lists for the current Black Clover Mobile. Um, these global codes, I'm not going to be, I'll, I'll be honest, I've been low-key slipping on them purely because they have been absolutely horrible. So this is the latest one, I'm just going to see what I get. There, because I've been told we're now getting stamina, so if this is the 100 stamina, I mean, I'll, okay, cool. But I don't know what it is with these global codes, man, they have been lacking. Like 10 SSR XP potions, like what is going on? Alright, well we've got one of the go. Hopefully they, they keep this up. These codes, man, they've been atrocious. And I've seen what everyone's been saying with like the whole situation with JP. Just to say, keep in mind on JP, we've got the um, uh, Transcendence gear. So in order to uh, awaken a LR gear piece, um, you need like 10 pieces of that same LR gear. So just, I'm sure you guys are aware of this, but if you don't know, that's the new mechanic that's coming into... Uh, gearing up your LR gear even further, limit breaking them basically. So that that's why JP got what they got. Anyway, we're not here for that. I explained everything done and dusted. I want to get into some tier list action. So let's get it off with the final Black Clover tier list for 2023. Alrighty, let's begin, shall we? I think we'll start things off with, where is he? Yuno, since of course he is again an upcoming character and he was of course season two. Um, this Yuno is kind of like a lower level of Lotus in the sense of his first skill, slowing the enemy stamina down. If you do manage to get his, I believe his unique passive to his second skill, you can drop the enemy's attack by like 54%. He's not too terrible, he also has incapacitates and whatnot on his buddy skill. Um, or combination skill, he can also allow um, your partner to bypass invinci- well, both of you bypass invincibility, um, if I can remember correctly. Um, but I I'll put him on par with like Gorsh and Sally in the sense of just kind of supporting that. So um, I'll put him in B, I'll put him in B, uh, not too bad of a debuff supporter. Again, he's a very, very lower level of like a Lotus play, I would say. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going to put him that. And so with that, bro, Vanessa is just... I, I don't know what it is and what they were trying to accomplish with this Vanessa because where is she? She, uh, she just I, I, honestly the fact that she's wearing a bikini I think that's just kind of what they were going with like you know what let's get Vanessa in a bikini throw her in the game screw her kit it's just let's just completely ruin her kit but people will summon because people are simps and I, <laughs> I feel like that's maybe the case I don't know I, the big question is are you guys going to be summoning for the fact that she's She's not the best, but are you going to be summoning because of the looks? Someone's going to be doing that. Let's just call it how it is. Someone's going to be doing that. Um, okay, moving on. Um, Kahono. So, should we? Obviously, these guys are the upcoming characters. So, in a PvP perspective, Kahono, I would say, is A rank. Um, purely due to the fact that uh, she has the barrier play which you can quite get a good amount being like 35k 40k if you work on a HP that then correlates to if you do the ultimate you actually get more of the healing back to where if you did the ultimate at the very first turn um, of course with the meta play she is supporting that barrier meta uh, pretty much of a nuisance character I'll say with uh, how she works um, I forgot what her passives are that's another thing I actually don't know what her passives are let me just double check before, because she could be ranked a little bit higher. Let's have a look. Um, increase. Okay, that's helpful. And the damage reduction. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I think A rank is going to be most suitable for her uh, when it comes to the PvP meta. And then Kyoto. Ooh, Kyoto is a difficult one because a part of me wants to put him in B rank. I mean, because here's the thing about this man in particular. He hits hard, but he requires you setting him up outside of that he's just a gradual brute force character he's not a character that instantly can just pop off as like many other nuking characters that we have um, or many other offensive characters that we have he requires build up he requires buffs and uh, outside of just him doing damage there's nothing more to him hence why I kind of want to put him in B although his damage out I mean like okay so this is kind of okay this is the best way I can put it a built up Kyoto with like buffs and whatnot, and if you can survive, then the ultimate is going to hit hard to the point where I'll give him the respect of being an A rank. Without any build up, he's an absolute wet wipe. An absolute wet wipe. Um, so I think I'll do, as I'll, for the sake of the video, I'll put him low A to high B. I think that's kind of uh, 
Well, I'll, I'll keep them for right now. And then continue onwards, we got the season four characters, of course. Now, in, in a global format, one of these characters have to be given out for free because there's three of them and the way they're doing global seasonals is two. And I'm just going to put this out of the way. I think Jack is going to be given out for free because Charlotte for Golion, they're actually good. Jack, from what I've, ex from what I've experienced, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of him. I'll give him props though because he does got, he's got stuns, but in a PvP deal, it's just, it, 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 unfortunately, it's not going to cut it. I mean... He does have a way he's got a chance to perform additional attacks, which is nice. And then, of course, on his combination, he can dispel barrier. Um, it kind of works in the same as the blue jack, where his second skill um, kind of builds him up with buffs, penetration, accuracy, and, of course, there's a miscal miscalculation. In order to give him the additional, of course, if the enemy ha has the bled at DOT, then, of course, he can stun. But, again, um, from the performance, from what I've experienced, he just wasn't cutting it at all. And especially with where things are right now, um, I, 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 well, there we go. I, I do expect him to be given out for free on the global side of things. Uh, I'll be I, to, if they give out for Golion or Charlotte, that is a huge W. If they choose to give out one of these guys for free instead of Jack, that is a big W because these characters, Charlotte. Oh my god, I might even bump. You know what? No, Charlotte is that. No, yeah, this blue Charlotte. She is a disgusting counter-attacking meta. Obviously, on JP and KR for 2024, counter-attacking meta is going to get elevated this charlotte is in my well technically speaking william kind of starts it off in the world carrot continues it but this charlotte comes in and just makes it even more cancerous uh so she and of course there's fortified her her defense play is well her support play more importantly is so freaking disgusting where is she um so she like on her first skill she can apply a counter attack to, to the highest attacking ally which is what you want on a second skill, if you have the Greymore, you get total defense with a 40% increase on all your enemy, oh, sorry, all your allies. And then on her ultimate, she applies the counter attack on all of your teammates. It's a 60% chance, but it's gonna happen. Um, and then of course with the passives, when she's attacked, you get one skill point. That's the LR passive. So if you manage to get her to LR plus two, it's a GG. And then when all allies belong to the blue typing, which is the meta blue typing inflicts silence for one turn on an enemy team at the start of the battle basically they can't use their skill too this charlotte is crazy i love her my love boy fuego um i'm actually gonna put him for golden i would say he's like high a to like yeah high a to srt um I'll, I'll keep him in high a so this fuego um he is the character that kind of helps out to kind of start ro start the ball rolling for the burn meta so of course season four five and six um, that's when the burn meta will come on in more often with like Charmy and then freaking Magna. So, but um, yeah, for Golan does start things off. He does bypass barrier on both his um, second skill and his ultimate. If you have burns on the ultimate, then he's allowed to. Do, well, it allows him to do more damage. And it's AOE, by the way. Keep that in mind, which is pretty disgusting. On his unique passive, he does have immortality, which is very nice. And then if you manage to get that LR plus two, then for every a stack of burn the enemy has he gets an increased damage so overall the burn meta starts off with Fulgoleon and then it keeps going up and up and up with the future seasons to come and you guys will see that as we're going through the tier list even more but I'll put him in high A um, you can I mean yeah you can fight your case to put him in S but um, I'll, I'll keep S open for the future seasonal burn meta characters that come into play that I would put him above um, moving along we've got Gulder and we've got uh, third eye awakening Veto. PvP didn't really wasn't meta. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I mean I, I could see on how much of a helpful character he can be with the defense increase, protection, which uh, oh okay so it's designated which is pretty nice. So they can't be selected. So it's not like Vanessa where she's given it to the lowest speed character, aka your defender, which is horrible. Um, also barrier plays being given to him. That ultimate is very nice to have. Allies with the lowest HP, so your attackers will take the brute force of the initial attack, so their HP will drop lower than everyone else's, so they'll get the invulnerability. Um, I'm actually putting him in high A. No, well, yeah, no, we'll, we'll put him in low A, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can actually see some good uses from him because of that ultimate specifically, and just of how much of a, a decent support that, that he is. Um, yeah, wait, 8% chance to buff prevention? Oh, okay, it's not too bad. Wait, what is his passive? Max HP. Okay, that's fine. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll put him in um, A. That, that's fine. We'll put him in low A. That's fine. Um, Third Eye Awakening Veto. Oh, God. I don't think he's performing too well, unfortunately. 
Although I have seen some crazy stuff with the HP recovery that this man can apply. Attacked after granting up to 40% increased damage buff in proportion of lost HP. Grants a body enhancement itself for two turns. Also he gets um, 45 from his Greymore. Okay. 100% defense and 30% endurance. Grants 50% of max HP as HP recovery. Uh, enhanced Horn. As a tank, I don't know why they're doing this with Veto. Um, he's such a selfish goddamn tank. What is going on? Uh, I'll put him in B. Oh, we got the season five. Oh, we got the season five. Oh, baby. This Noel is a hater. I love her and I hate her. I hate fighting against her. I hate fighting against her. She is the epitome of just rage inducing, right? Because on her first skill, buff duration, as well as minus SP. Second skill, minus SP. Ultimate, minus SP. Three, this time round. Um, where is it? At the start of the wave, inflict 30% damage increase buff on all enemies. When attacked, remove continuous HP recovery buff on all enemies. Charming, see you later. At the start of the battle, inflicts 40% reduced damage dealt debuff on attacker class enemies for one turn. That's the unique. So this is the LR passive. That's the unique passive that you get once you get it to LR. Overall, this... Oh yeah, on a combination, she can also bypass barrier. Um, if you do manage to get her grey more, she also blocks HP recovery. Um, she can pull taunt. She is a... Uh, you can build her up to be a tank. I highly recommend that, by the way. Because on PvP... There are people that build her up to where she can absorb so much damage and she is just the epitome of I hate you. I love you because I, I have you and I can use you but at the same time you're so annoying to fight against. She is top tier as a mother trucker. It, I'm telling you man, the whales in this game are just something else. And then we got Charmy which uh, she is a treat of a character and she is obviously with the burn metal for Golion. again i mean if you want to put for Golion beside charmy that's also an option i mean you can do that i'm not denying that um but charmy is a nice little treat of a character um because of course she does help out with the burn her Greymore does support her um, first skill where if the enemy is under a pumpkin kai uh, pie debuff then she can apply stun but more importantly the burn is being applied the second skill is aoe and this is where the pumpkin pie effect will come to play if they already Sorry, if they're under the pumpkin pie effect, then you'll apply Halloween firecrackers, which is basically uh, a ticking time bomb, if you want to call it that. And then the ultimate is where it truly does kind of kick up on how this Charmy is working. So, like, applies the pumpkin pie effect to an enemy. Pumpkin pie, when five turns pass, after applying this effect, inflicts 600% of attack and magic attack damage dealt and then removes it. After applying it at the start of every turn, increase damage dealt by pumpkin pie. If an enemy under this effect starts to turn, Oh, sorry, starts their turn, transfer the pumpkin pie effect to a random teammate on their side, inflicts continuous burn damage to an enemy whom pumpkin pie has been transferred to for two turns. If an enemy is under the pumpkin pie effect, inflict burn for two turns. And then, of course, the LR plus two. Upon removing the pumpkin pie effect, deals continuous burn two stack damage to all enemies for two turns. And then, once again, she has immortality. So the burn meta is there. And obviously, the immortality play is just straight off the bat pretty much solidifying to say that you will get a turn in <laughs> when it comes to uh getting some damage off which is pretty nice but this charmy is an absolute treat of a character season five is so stacked with the power of uh you know especially with the meta play too um for pvp uh okay moving along all right um i'm gonna put you know in a rank purely because he's actually not that bad of a character um, so, just to give you guys an idea, if you have his grey mold, which I truly do believe is kind of like the best thing to have so that you can get the best out of him, and you max out his second skill, that's a 50% chance to silence on an AoE, as well as reduce everyone's ultimate by one. So skill one is locked, ultimate is locked, to then they have to resort to using skill two. Now, I mean, in certain situations, that might not be the best, <laughs> but you're still kind of cutting off to what the enemy can use, right? You're kind of limiting their choices. So, I mean, it might not too, be too terrible. Um, again, the first skill, you can kind of increase your stamina, which is nice to have. And then the ultimate itself, you can really focus fire on a single character and kind of neutralize them uh, for two turns, which is nice. So I wouldn't say this, you know, is too terrible, although he's not exactly meta um, and you didn't get too much play when he initially released, <laughs> unfortunately, but... Um, from his kit, he's not terrible. He's not terrible. 
Um, it's just there's so many threats going along. Maybe if they made it so that it's a Wii, then I mean that itself would have been broken. But there's so many other broken characters that maybe this unit wouldn't actually. Well, it wouldn't be that much of a bad idea to maybe put it as a Wii with that ultimate. You know, I'm just saying with how things are with the broken characters that are coming about. You know, I'm, I'm, I would not be too opposed to having a broken debuffer like you know himself. They kind of made him more on the AOE scale of things, but I digress. I digress. But when it comes to Langris, because of course you know and Langris do come together when it comes to their time to drop, I'm actually gonna put these boys together purely because Langris is honestly uh, a character that can consistently get his ultimate uh, fairly quick from his kit alone. So like, if I go over here, where is he, where is he, where is he, where is he, boom. Okay, so like, uh, on his ultimate, I'm sorry, on his second skill, uh, the way he works is that he can take away um, SP from an ally to give to himself. If you do manage to get his Greymore, then he gets an SP plus 3 rather than an SP plus 2. That's the buff. Not only that, he's given himself an increased speed, right? So he's going to be outlapping characters, which is nice. On his first skill, he's also getting SP. On his passive, or LR passive, sorry, at the start of the turn, grants a plus 2 SP. He has immortality. Everything that he does works in his favor to get his ultimate. So the consistency of block HP recovery, increased favor damage, reduced HP recovery, as well as debuff immunity. It's just, it's going to be, I mean, look, it's on for two turns. And by the sounds of it, that's all he needs to get his ultimate next time round. Like, yeah, Langris is a character not to be slept on. Um, I mean, he does help out in the green meta side of things. Unfortunately, I don't think he's getting much uses now due to obviously with what's occurred with like Arsa, etc. Of course, um, but overall, uh, when he initially did release, he was uh, a decent character with how quick he is getting his ultimate. It's so consistent too. So, yeah, very nice. Um, oh, Charlotte! <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Charlotte characters within this game are just something else. So currently right now in my current PvP team, in my meta PvP team, this Charlotte is on my team um, purely because of obviously her first skill, attack with the highest, uh, sorry, the, uh, the highest attack ally gets an SP plus one. Um, when it comes to her second skill, SP plus two on a designated ally with debuff immunity and then has a 40% chance to reduce the cooldown on skill two. Um, of course, if you do work on her second skill, then clearly as you guys can see, that's a 100% cooldown on skill 2 for one turn on a designated ally and then of course if you do have the grammar with it then she does provide that protection too so overall this second skill is just protecting that attacking ally because that's in, in the case of meta it's going to be more for julius on noel that's just how it is it's disgusting it's this second skill broken and then her ultimate grants all allies reduced damage taken by 30 percent um defense penetration level three which is ignoring 30 percent on the target's defense and then on top of that if an ally has a barrier it extends it this is annoying because getting through the barrier good luck <laughs> good luck and then of course if you do work on a skill that's uh, an extra what was that 24 percent on um the reduced damage taken now what also breaks this um charlotte is her passive so her unique passive if everyone is a green typing then at the start of the battle all allies eight percent of their own max hp as barrier so she basically has a automatic barrier for the green typing and green typing a uh, green mono is a thing now right so that is disgustingly broken and then of course with her lr plus two or just lr passive come into play so if you don't have a full green team that's fine because realistically you do want to kind of max her out in the lr um, dupe system purely because of every turn it grants an ally with the highest attack sorry highest all attack a barrier equal to 50% of own max HP for two turns. So the, the, when it comes to offensive characters, this Charlotte just protects them and makes it somewhat kind of impossible to kind of kill them if you don't have a character that can bypass barrier. That's all I'll say. She just kind of beefs them up to make it so that it's, it's very difficult to kill. Um, but yeah, she is pretty much one of the best supporters in the goddamn game. We got Magna, which I think for the burn meta, He's kind of like the best one. Uh, his damage out. Honestly, the combination with Charlotte and Magna when it comes to the burn matter, throwing in, in Charmy, broken. Broken. But his damage output, because Magna can also bypass uh, Barrier. Um, he, yeah, Season 6 is also going to be a must summon season for both characters. So, first skill, you've got burn being applied. Second skill, you've got also burn being applied. 
also has an HP block recovery, which is very nice to have. And then the ultimate, um, uh, upon with all the burn that the enemy has with DOT, um, he gets a 4% increased damage, he also bypasses barrier, and then he gets an extra turn. So basically, like Julius, upon killing the enemy, and with how strong this Magna is, and if you are playing the burn meta, just by even having Charmio for Golion beside him, which is more than enough, you're practically okoing the enemy to then grant that extra turn to continue on doing damage, stacking up that burn, and it will lead into that next unit kind of being okoed. Uh, LR passive, he can stun um, if the enemy is taking continuous damage. So upon attacking an enemy, if they're taking burn, you can stun. At the start of the battle, it inflicts continuous burn damage to all enemies for two turns. So even when he starts the game, burns are already being applied. So he's already so he's basically turn one ready to do uh, a decent amount of damage, continue on the burn. But yeah, Magna is by far the best burn meta character in the game. Um, okay, I kind of want to... Oh, Fana. Oh, God. Fana, I'm going to put... Ah, see, this is a difficult one. I'm going to put Fana S rank. Fana is the definition of self AoE nuking. Um, she is just a full on brute force. To be honest, you can fight your case and say she is SS. So, obviously, with the my team, when it comes to attacking, I do have Fana on my PvP. And you can build her up to where she gets permanent uh, attack buffs from hatred, right? From using your first skill or even your ultimates. And that then, of course, as you guys can see, for each hatred, she gets uh, an increase on her damage. The thing is, is that Fana does so much damage that you don't even need the hatred. On her ultimate, she can do a disgusting amount of damage because it's a two hitter when it comes to her ultimate. So she performs an extra attack even if she doesn't have hatred applied. So if hatred isn't present on self, then she performs an extra attack dealing damage equal to 30% of attack and magic attack. And then if hatred is uh, applied, then she does she performs but with higher percentage, right? Inflicts barrier removal on a random ally. So if, if there's if there is an ally with barrier, um, then of course that's well, it's it's not exactly going to save one character unless that one enemy on the enemy team has a barrier. Again, it's not going to save them. Um, she also has burn. I don't know why they gave her a taunt with her Greymore. Um, I don't even know what her Greymore does to be honest. Actually, I do want to have a look. Hold on a minute. Let me let, let's just take a quick little gander because I've got it applied and I do like to use Noel's um, protection so that people focus fire on Fana. But I don't know. Okay, hold on a minute, Fana. What do you do? If afflicted with taunt or enhanced taunt, there's a 40 to 100 percent chance to grant. Oh, oh. Well, that explains that. <laughs> I had no idea that was uh, the uh, skill page, and I have it on because um, I used to have just a full-on all attack 20 percent on. But regardless, uh, she is a disgusting high amount of damage dealer. And turn one, she can pretty much Oko majority blue typing, including like tanks. They'll, from what from my experience, they've fallen just below 50% HP. But every other blue unit has been O-code. Obviously, Julius does have a revive, so that activates his revive. But her damage output, um, even with like green typing, still disgusting. I believe once again she does majority Oko or green typings too. Um, obviously, red typing have a typing advantage. They'll tank it quite decently, although they'll still fall behind um, to like. 50 60 percent hp maybe even lower if, the, if you haven't built them up correctly but this final does hit hard regardless of not even need to be set up so ah uh, oh okay i'll give her the ss but uh, brute force yeah no we'll give it ss and then we've got witch queen which i'm sure we're all aware <laughs> it's funny because of course witch queen's kit is kind of like meh but they clearly set it up to where the reason why she's A ranked is because of a certain someone that comes out after her, which a few people picked up on. Majority were like, yo, this Witch Queen, she ain't it. But it was all in favor to set up for the next character, making Witch Queen actually really decently well for PvP. Obviously, she is the DOT Queen, as I like to say. Very clutch on that part with all that she's applying. Uh, and then of course it's the ultimate which pretty much triggers Black Aster to come in and um, pretty much one-shot anyone, whoever he wants, his choosing, absolutely one-shot them. 
And on top of that, then gives him life steal, so that way you've got a second turn of nuke and once again, once he drops down his HP. But outside of that, that's pretty much the premise of uh, um, this Witch Queen. There's not really much uh, going for her, unfortunately. Uh, obviously, she's a healer, so realistically, her LR passive is something that you want to really invest into to actually get to, to, to maximize the all allies healing. Um, and then, of course, her passive, if you've got a whole red typing team, which you can quite do so with now the burn meta being majority red typing, so you can make good use of that. Um, if HP falls below 30% of max HP, grant self the immortality buff for one turn. So, red meta really does come into play with the defense play that uh, this Witch Queen has, especially with that unique passive. But, um, yeah, I mean, let's just kind of end it off with Black Aster, woo! Yeah, he's going to be SS. Uh, yeah, there's there's not really much to say. Uh, his damage output is disgusting. Again, if without Witch Queen, he's S rank. With Witch Queen, he's SS. Because you've got a DPS Aster that you can trigger yourself and uh, pretty much clean house. Because he ain't dying. Keep in mind. <laughs> Witch Queen is keeping him alive. He ain't dying. So uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to Oko. To say that, that actually sounds insane, but yeah, I think this is where things are at right now when it comes to the PvP meta for Black Clover Mobile. Again, this is from my experience, from me playing PvP and just kind of judging these characters, but let me know your thoughts down below. Well, I mean, then again, if you are playing Global, then um, you, you guys have to wait your turn, but if you do play JP and KR, you know, what do you guys think? If you're reading it on paper, what are your thoughts? But overall, this is kind of where I'm classing things to end off the 2023 pvp side of things i can't wait for 2024 because we already know instantly with like the season eight we've got the counter attack meta going to be elevated with yami who can counter it and then mary leona who's going to be pretty much stopping all the people with their uh, immortality and barrier plays she's going to be coming in and trying to also oko those characters so from what 2023 has been with all the protection plays 2024 is coming into play with the consistency of just attacking making it so that it might be a bad idea to attack as well as because of the counter attack as well as countering the counter attack to then have a Mariluna also now bypass all the defense play that you can build up to where she's just going to be giving you that right hand so it'll be interesting to see how things go on but yeah 2024 i mean 2023 tier list happy days happy days